Hello everyone. So in this video, you will learn how to use brand story on Amazon to make sure that uh, your customers love and uh, value your brand. Also, you will learn how to create uh, ideas for storytelling uh, Amazon posts and how to reuse all this content on your social media. And my guest today is Sasha Gorelik. Hi, Sasha. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. And um, so could you please shortly introduce what you do and then sure. yeah, tell us what we will learn in more details. Okay, so um, my name is Sasha, everyone knows. I have been working with Amazon sellers and e-commerce store owners for about five years now. And um, we do copywriting and any copywriting, we started off mostly with Amazon listings, but then as time goes on, obviously there are more and more things that you know store owners need, such as storefront text, packaging text, um, A plus content, and obviously people who start their own Shopify websites need content for their websites. So we do everything related to e-commerce copywriting. Perfect. And uh, I wanted to remind that if you want help with uh, from Sasha's team, if you need to co copy like for your products and so on. Everything she will teach also today is relevant to what she does. You will find the link below in the description to her website. And yeah, please mention Orange Click in this video so that she knows yes. you yeah. watch you this video. Me, yeah. Tell me Orange Click, Augustus, and then we'll know. All right. So I think we're ready to jump to the content. Uh, okay. Here is your slides. and. Uh, Okay, let's go. So I called this win the battle for your brand with Amazon's untapped tools and using posts and stories to stand out from the crowd. So this is me, uh, the founder of the Ecom Copywriter. And this is Taylor Swift. Okay. Um, storytelling, it like seems to be the new buzzword nowadays. Everybody's talking about storytelling, how it helps people remember you better. But the question is, how do you use storytelling correctly on Amazon? So that leads us to the brand story section. And it's relatively new. And I've noticed that not too many people are using it yet. So I kind of wanted to go through the different modules and show what Amazon gives you and what you should be sharing and the right way to kind of, um, you know, show your brand on Amazon. So you'll go into Seller Central and you'll go into where it says advertising and you have create A plus content. And this is what comes up. You can either do the regular EBC, which is now called A plus, the enhanced product description, or you have the brand story. Um, and so here it even tells you, you can tell your brand story across all different products in your brand. Um, and you can add this section to um, different ASINs. So you can actually then sort of test which ones it works better for like if it works well, if it doesn't work well, you can actually do some A-B testing just based on how many ASINs you add it to. Um, and the content itself, it displays above like where the A-plus content is. So once you create the brand story, once you click on that, you'll get, the, you'll get a few different module options. But the first one is the brand carousel background. So that's basically a background um, that appears that kind of represents your brand. And I'm going to show you further on in the presentation um, how that really looks on Amazon itself. So we've got the brand carousel background and you basically add this kind of background image and then you add like a headline text, which could be the name of your store, a short slogan, your tagline, um, you know, a very short um, statement about the brand. And then you've got, you know, some body text that you can add there as well. So any other content that you add on top of this brand image background, it's going to cover the, the image itself. So just keep that in mind. And it might be good to test uh, a plain solid background versus like an actual photo or a colorful image. So you can kind of play around with that. Then what you have is actually three new modules. It used to be that there was just some questions about how you got your brand started, but now they have these new modules. Um, and what's really interesting actually is that do there doesn't seem to be a limit to how many you can actually add. So you can add like loads and loads of brand focus images. Um, and these let you also add a headline text and a tiny bit of body text as well. Um, but there's no links or buttons on this image. It's literally just an image that, you know, represents something in your brand. So think about lifestyle images, or if you want, you can highlight some products, but keep in mind, there's no actual links on this image. 
Um, then we have the brand modules. Okay, so I like this because it's really interesting and you can actually put in different products here and it links to your storefront or to the actual um, product. So you have headline text, which has got 30 characters and then a visit the store. So this is super interesting because it actually, um, if people are on your actual product listings page, then they can actually then be taken straight to your storefront through this module, um, which actually gets them away from all the competitors that usually show up underneath, you know, your actual product listing. Then this module is the one that they always had, um, which is the brand module. How did we get started? What makes our company unique? And why do we love what we do? So those are kind of the standard questions um, that Amazon gives you. They also have what problem are we solving for customers? Um, but they also have the option to make up your own questions. So you can put in anything, actually. It doesn't have to be a question. It could be a statement. It could be your three main brand values. It could be um, your favorite customer story. You know, you can really get creative here um, because it does allow you to customize both the question and the answer. So, you know, you don't have to just go with the boring, oh, well, we were struggling with fitness and we didn't want to, you know, whatever it was, you know, that you, you had a problem with and then you decided to make a business out of it. So that kind of story gets a little old, I would say, and people aren't so interested in it. So try and think of a way to really bring the customer in um, and make them interested in your brand. Then we have the about us module. So, you know, it's kind of, it can get repetitive, which is why it's really good to, for the question section to come up with something a little bit more interesting than just about how you got started, because otherwise it's gonna be a bit of an overlap, I think, with this module, which is the about us module. So in this module, you know, you can write about uh, what your brand does, um, what makes you different, things like that. I'm going through these quite quickly because afterwards I'm going to tell you more about um, how to tell brand stories properly. So just bear with me here. But these are just the different modules that you have and that you can add. So you can, you know, you can choose not to add the about us section. You can just choose to have the brand images or you can just choose to have the um, the storefront, you know, the product image tiles on the um, on the brand story section. OK, so now that we've kind of there's only four different modules that you can use. And let's look at some examples of how this actually looks on Amazon. I had some trouble actually finding, um, you know, brands that were already using this because it is relatively new. So here we go. So I found this company and they sell um, silk bedding. So what they have here is they have what makes our products unique. Our products have exquisite styles and diverse colors, which is very nice. They're telling you, uh, you know, about their products, what makes them different why we love what we do. They said that they hope more and, more and more people will like Chinese silk and understand that elegance never goes out of style. I like that. And what problem are they solving? They are dedicated to providing a better silk pillowcase to guard your beauty. Um, and here they have a product tile where they've highlighted four of their products and you can visit their store. Now, what I liked about this was that they used the same backgrounds on all the products, which makes it look really, really nice. And as you can see though, they have this um, image background, which is just the, like a picture of a bed, obviously, but it's covered by these modules. So just keep that in mind. Here's another example from another bed company actually. And this one has kept the background completely plain. They have added here this, which is with the headline. So they've just put their brand name there and then they've got a little sentence here, cozy and affordable home linens, um, delivered with a smile, which is cute. And yeah, so here they've written, get cozy, better sleep, everyday value. So they haven't got questions here. They've actually just put in, put in three different statements. And again, here they have four different products, explore the store. Um, here they haven't put any background. So I feel like the other version um, that we just saw this one was a lot nicer. It's a lot more branded. It just looks better. Um, but this one is also, it's okay, you know, but it's just not very exciting. So keep that in mind when you're creating the brand story that you really want to capture people's attention. And although I'm a copywriter, I believe that, you know, the design goes hand in hand with the copy as well. Okay, here is kind of what it looks like on mobile. So this is for a 
a boots company and you can see it's kind of like squashed a little bit so you, you should really test how your images will, will turn out so here they've got this um, photo in the background of a crane and then it shows up here and they have um, visit the store the the product tiles um, so yeah it's basically the same the same type of thing appears on on desktop and mobile just the images might you know look slightly different okay so if you're going to be putting in an about us section or you're going to be putting in the questions about how you got your start and what you do and why you love what you do so the first thing you should think about is why you got into business in the first place you know what it should be beyond the actual product itself it should be something bigger you know there's the simon Sick video which is start with why um and i think that's a, one of it's a big reason why people will buy from you is when they they like what you're about and not just the products that you make, um, which is why people buy from, you know, Nike or Allo Yoga, not just because they make nice yoga stuff, it's because they like the brand as a whole. Um, what are your values? Do you have a specific ideology or a belief system? So this works really well, I think, um, for a lot of brands, especially in the health and fitness or in supplements, stuff like that, because those brands usually believe in a healthy lifestyle. So there's some really, you know, um, good values that they can bring up that align with their customer. Um, what mood or emotions do you want to trigger when people come across your brand? So I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about, but it's really, really important because if you're selling silk bedding, so obviously the mood and the emotions that you want to trigger is this feeling of luxury, of elegance, and not just some kind of like casual whatever brand. Um, if you're selling, you know, fitness products, you want to come across probably as motivational, as, you know, confident, um, whatever it might be. Maybe you want to come across as kind and caring. So think about those things and think about what mood and emotions that you can put into your images, into the photos that you're using, um, and into the copy, obviously, as well. What transformation will people experience when using your product? So this one is also really important. You have to think about the customer's life kind of before they have your product and then what they can achieve, what transformation they can achieve after they have your product. So it could be they have a specific pain point that you're solving or maybe you're just making their life so much better um, with something luxurious or, you know, whatever your product might be. Um, number five is knowing what your audience loves and fears. So understanding, again, those psychological triggers, take advantage of them and play into those emotions. Creating a vision and a mission statement for your company is also a really good way to kind of create a strong brand because once you have a vision and mission statement, then everything else that you create kind of follows that. Um, and it's, it's just really like a compass that keeps you guided and keeps you consistent in your messaging and in your imagery and all of the things that you do as a brand and also in the products that you go on to create. So what makes a really good brand story? The best brand stories paint the customer as the hero. They address the customer problems like we just mentioned. They address their desires. They play into that. And we guide customers, well, not we, but you know, brand owners guide them on this adventurous journey to fulfillment and happily ever afters. Because what I want people to really understand is that you know, your brand story is not necessarily something static. It's something that um, takes place across you know, all different touch points in your business, whether it's on social media or your Amazon posts or the packaging or um, a message insert or an email that you send the customer. So you want to be this mentor, as they say in the hero's journey. You can, I can't go into that now because it's too long, but you want to be that mentor that really addresses the customer problem, takes them on this journey, and once they get your product, that's when they live happily ever after. So it's not necessarily just like this static piece of content that goes online. It's really something much bigger than that that has to always happen consistently. Okay, here's just some more tips that you can use for the brand story section. Um, number one is obviously getting your brand visuals and photography looking amazing and make sure it's consistent with the with the photos that you're using in your Amazon listings and in your A plus content below. Because if, not, if it's not consistent, then it's just gonna be confusing. It's not gonna build trust with the customer. Um, so, you know, 
if you can create a brand identity guide before you even start this, before you hire a designer or get a designer to create one for you. And that way everything is going to have a really cohesive look. Okay. In the, um, in the question section, you know, you can really get creative. So here you can actually mention your brand values or a customer highlight or a customer transformation, how you invented your product. Now, obviously if you're selling, let's say, woven baskets that are made in Africa, you're going to have an easier time talking about how your products are made or what you invented them. Um, but what you can try and do is, you know, talk to your customers if you already have customers or if you have a community maybe and ask them for stories and share customer stories as well, like, you know, in that section. Um, again, for the about us section, try and make your customer the center of attention. So I see, I see a lot of brands that do this, you know, they've had a problem and they're like, okay, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to make these really cool products. And I'm going to make tons of money. And, you know, when a customer reads that, they think, you know, so I, I couldn't care less. Like they don't give a crap about what makes you successful. What they want to know is how you're going to change their life and really transform, you know, how they live and everything else. Um, so don't be too boastful about why you started your business and how now you're making tons of money. Um, okay, the store showcase. So create irresistible image tiles like we saw earlier. You know, create nice backgrounds, make them look really cohesive and get them into your storefront away from your competitors. And it's a really good way also to showcase products that maybe are newly launched and don't have too many reviews on them yet. You can actually... Um, get people to check them out through the um, through those image tiles. So Daniel Kahneman, a behavioral psychologist, says that storytelling can trick the conscious, rational mind into thinking made a decision that was actually made by the subconscious. So, you know, this is what you want to do. You know, you might think it's a waste of time to start spinning a yarn and start writing this about us section, but it's actually really interesting because it tricks customers because they read it because they know that it's not, they're not being sold to. They're just like, oh, this is a nice story. But subconsciously, it kind of makes them feel really connected to your brand and maybe even invested in your brand. And that way, they're more likely to buy from you. So I wouldn't dismiss it as something unimportant. I think it is really important. And another thing that I think is that you know, the A plus content only allows you to add so many modules. So if you're wasting an, a section in the A plus content with an about us, you can actually now put it into the brand story section and then focus more on the actual products in the A plus section as well. Um, okay, so stay consistent and think holistically. So for instance, Apple, I mean, we can't have a presentation without mentioning Apple, can we? Apple attempts to ensure every element of your experience or any part of the company in some way reflects the central tenets of the brand. So that means when you walk into an Apple store, when you're using their products, when you're opening their packaging, everything is part of the Apple experience. So think of how you can do that for your business and really stay consistent. So just looking at an example right now, and I'm playing a bit of devil's advocate here because this brand, I have looked at there on Amazon and I really like what they do simply because they stay true and consistent to who they are and to their values. But the funny thing is their brand story is really boastful about how awesome they are. Um, it doesn't really focus on the customer so much. It more focuses on how cool the founders of this brand are. But I think why it works is because when people come on this and they see these photos they they want to be living this like beach life they want to be as cool as this brand they want to be like these people so that's why it kind of works because it's creating this like image and the scenery that people want to like they want to live that life they want to be able to go surfing every day and play ping pong and whatever else they do at work in this company which is called trust the bum um so you know they have this on their a plus content work less live more and, and you can see they've got this whole beach theme going on and they sell sunscreen. But what's really good about this company is that they don't mention hanging out by the pool. All they focus on is being at the beach. But obviously you can use these products at the pool as well. But what they've done is they've stayed consistent with this like living on the beach message and it's everywhere and in everything that they do. 
Um, so that's just something to really keep in mind about consistency. Um, okay, so we're going back because this is going to segue now into Amazon posts, but this is the brand module on mobile. And then when I was on mobile, guess what showed up? Amazon posts. And they come up kind of like below the brand story. Um, and it was inspiration from this brand. And then it also had related posts that were from other brands. So I think that's something really interesting because what it means is that when you're using posts, you're showing up in all these like different random places on Amazon, which could get customers, more and more customers to come and look at your stuff and into your store. And not only that, I think the way Amazon posts are working is that they're so similar in a way to social media that it just feels really organic for people because everyone nowadays is always scrolling through social media. So Amazon is trying to make the shopping experience less like, shoppingy and more like social so that people i think are more likely to be just like scrolling through amazon more often because it feels like kind of like a social media feed okay so posts are showing up everywhere on amazon but first i wanted to go into a bit of boring stuff um which is like some of the details about posts and then we'll get into more of the ideas of how you can use posts for your brand okay so First of all, can you use posts on social media? So yes, I believe it's okay to recycle content in both directions. So if you're a brand that's really, you know, killing it on social media, you've already got Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, I don't know, Pinterest. So you can recycle the content. There's no problem with that as long as your posts are acceptable by Amazon because they will reject certain imagery and they'll reject certain text on images. For instance, you can't use customer reviews. Um, but if you're not a brand that has social media set up yet, you can actually use your posts on social media, you can definitely reuse them, you may need to resize images for different platforms. Um, but what I think also is that if you are doing social media and Amazon posts, take advantage on social media of like reels and video content, which is much more engaging, and it's favored by let's say the Instagram algorithm nowadays. So just keep that in mind that you know, obviously, when you're first starting out, you can definitely just, you know, cross post the content on, on either platform. Okay, so Amazon, what do they advise? So they advise posting at least three to five times a week to increase your visibility. But you know, if you don't manage that even once a week is going to be good, even a couple of times a month, just get some posts up, because then you might even start getting followers on your Amazon store. Um, Amazon also advises that you can leverage your other channels. So for instance, if you have um, an email list or you have social media, you can actually add a note that says, follow us on Amazon, stay up to date on deals and stuff like that. So you, they're encouraging you to bring your community and, and get them to be your followers on Amazon as well. What is MYCE? I think you pronounce that mice. Uh, manage your customer engagement. So. Manage your customer engagement is for brand registered owners who have posts, who now have followers. And what you can do with um, MYCE is actually directly market to your Amazon sellers. Um, so people who, oh, sorry, Amazon followers. So, you know, it helps you build loyal relationships with people who are following you. And you can then send them emails and increase visibility, visibility of your new products. Obviously, these email campaigns that Amazon lets you send to your customers are not going to be fully customizable. You're not going to be able to write whatever you want. They're going to have to approve it first. Um, but it is a really good way to, um, I think, get your traffic more directed to your store and to your own products as opposed to letting them just browse anywhere on Amazon. Okay, so what do Amazon posts allow? What, what data do they give you? So they actually allow you to view impressions, clicks, click through rates um, for the featured products that you put into your Amazon posts. But Amazon posts are not really like social media because there's no like button, there's no comment section. The only thing, the only way people can engage with your posts is actually clicking through to the actual product that's kind of being promoted in that, um, in that post. Um, so just, keep that in mind, you know, it's not going to be giving you this like dopamine um, boost every time, because people aren't going to be liking anything, they will click through and you'll be able to see that data afterwards. 
Okay. So, you know, I know people struggle with social media, trying to think of new things to post, especially it's going to be especially hard for people who only have a couple of products on Amazon. So I'm going to be giving you four tips right now that you can, um, that you can steal. So you'll know what to do. Here we go. Are you ready? Number one, copy your customer comments. I do like a bit of alliteration. So you can browse through customer reviews and you can see what people are raving about and translate that into a powerful post. Um, obviously, if you don't have a lot of reviews on your product listings, you can go and check out some competitors and see what they have um, and use that for inspiration. Um, I think that's really uh, a really, really good way to come up with new ideas for your posts. Okay, use inspirational content. So using inspirational quotes that relate to your customer's life um, is a super easy way to just generate posts like really quickly. You can go on Pinterest, you can find thousands of these really cheesy inspirational stuff that people love and they lap it up um, and add a call to action, you know, check out this product today and you're ready to go. So here is a post in action. Um, this brand is called Waterfit. I think that's how you say it. And their little post here says they don't even have any text on the image itself. You can add a caption. You can add text to the image itself using Canva or getting a designer to do that. Um, but here they have some people want it to happen. Some people wish it would happen and others make it happen. So that's like a little inspirational thing. And then you can click through to their exercise bands, um, which, yeah, which are for people who love to keep fit. So that is a good piece of inspirational content that connects with people who are into fitness. Okay, the third idea that you can use to generate posts, it's focusing on features. I think this, this notion of, of focusing on, on benefits has been um, overdone. And I think sometimes it's good to focus on what makes your product great. You are allowed to highlight, you know, cool product features, you know, show off things that are relevant to your customer. And obviously you can then turn that feature into a benefit, but bring, bring up the things that you that you really think make your product stand out. If you sell a speaker and it's louder than everyone else's. So yeah. So tell people about that. If you sell um, some kind of fitness, I always talk about fitness because I like fitness, but let's say you're selling some kind of, um, you know, fitness compression gear and it's more stretchy than everyone else's. So tell people about that. Here's an example from this soap company that I found on Amazon. So they've got here, it's the Volcano Blast Men's Natural Bar Soap. Um, and they've got here, what's in it? They're just telling you the features of their product in an Amazon post. So they've got Volcano Blast Bar, has a combination of lime and peppermint, um, next level freshness. So that's, you know, we've started off with the feature and then they've brought in the benefit, which is next level freshness and leaves your skin super smooth. Anybody wanna buy this soap? I think that was a good post that they did. Okay, so the fourth idea, and I love this one, I think you can use this a lot and it works with any kind of product, is telling stories. So what do you want your customers to feel? What do you want them to imagine? Where can you transport their minds to? So this is from the same soap company and they've got a picture here of a woman and underneath the post, they had this text. Um, I, Unfortunately, the English that was written here is not so great. This is not something that I've written. It says, are you dreaming about having a spa in Bali this weekend? Impossible not. I think they meant impossible not to. Um, and they talked about having a hot shower, enjoying your bath with Bali soap. So they've tried to recreate like the feeling of being in a spa, but experience that right from the comfort of your own home. And I thought that was a really powerful image, number one. And the text is also pretty powerful. So see how you can tell stories, see if you can um, set the scene for your customer and make them imagine something amazing. Okay, so here's where you can really go deep. Um, and if you do this, if you do this exercise and write down all these things before you start even posting stuff on social media or creating A plus content or creating the brand story section on Amazon, um, everything is just gonna be much more clarified um, people are going to understand your brand better. They're going to connect with your brand better. So I'll just quickly go through them. It's, you know, your proposition, who you are, 
um, why you do what you do, what do you want to achieve, um, how are you going to be doing this, who do you serve, you know, you should really understand your customers properly, understand what goes on in their day-to-day -day life, um, what niche do you own, you know, what do people know you for, um, your values, so not only what do you do, what values do you have, but also what values do your customers believe in, I think that's really important in making sure that your brand aligns with your customer as well. So your personality, how do you present yourself online? So is your brand funny? Is your brand caring and motherly? Is your brand very serious and formal? Are you educational? You know, what, what kind of personality do you want to have online? In fact, you know, people really relate to brands as humans. It's just how our minds work for some reason. But um, yeah, the tone of voice. So, you know, that good ties sort of into the personality as well. Like, how do you want to communicate with your customers? Um, and obviously the core messages. So the core messages you can come up with as well are like the main sort of central things that your brand is known for and the main messages. And if you consistently communicate those messages over and over again in your, in your product listing photos, in your A plus content, you know, on your storefront. So people are going to remember those messages because you're going to keep using them. Obviously not just repeating and repeating the same text, but keeping the message consistent is to really stick in people's minds. And we come to the end of the presentation. Um, so I really think that this is now time, it's really time to start sharing stories, sharing more posts and pushing your brand to the next level and coming up with really creative ideas to connect with your audience. All right. Done. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So uh, we have few questions but i get an impression that uh, amazon seller now becomes an internet marketer it's not only like taking a picture and writing description but there are so many moving parts and like you have now an email list like you can communicate to the followers yeah, yeah uh, i know it's pretty cool so i i mean i think that like what amazon is realizing is that they can only do so much when it comes to marketing people's products and they are they're really encouraging brands to become like in charge of their own marketing um, with this brand story section, with the A plus, with the emails that you can send out with posts. Um, it's it's really interesting, yeah. How how Amazon has kind of kind of like evolved, um, and they are encouraging people to do that. I can imagine for you as a copywriter also, like five years ago, you were just writing descriptions and bullet points, but now <laughs> you have it. to study yeah. the visuals and yeah, 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 Crazy. yeah, definitely. All right, we have a few questions. Uh, Catherine is asking, does it have, does it provide a good preview of how it looks like on the desktop and mobile when you are editing there? Um, oh. So, you know what, to be, to be honest, like you can, like on, on Amazon as well, when you add the A plus content, so you can definitely preview how it looks. Um, I'm not sure if it gives you the mobile view. I haven't actually checked that. So, um, it's a really good question, Catherine. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the answer, but you can definitely get a preview of how it looks on desktop for sure. That's that's what you can do, yeah. Another question from Catherine. When you post uh, a post, Amazon post, how long is it visible? So that's that's a great question. It's, it's going to be in your brand store for always because... Um, when people go on your on your storefront, they can click on like the post section and they can actually just scroll through the feed, kind of like what you do when you go on Instagram and you can see old posts from brands, they, they just stick around. I don't think Amazon will keep featuring them though in, in the different places on the marketplace, but they're definitely still visible for a long time on your storefront, yeah. Okay, uh, is there any disadvantage in going crazy and posting 1020? <laughs> Uh, I have no idea. I mean, I probably like, I, I don't know if you would be able to come up with that much content. If you had 10 or 20 posts a day, you might take up a lot of real estate on Amazon. If you did that, I have no idea. Um, you might end up having posts getting shown up in who knows how many places on Amazon. Um, but I do think that's a little over the top to do 10 or 20 every day. That would be like crazy. 10 or 20 a week would be like, uh, you know, a little more. All right. So in the past, as a copywriter, you had to probably care only about this textual copy. But now, um, how does it feel like? Does it feel like it's very complicated uh, to bring a new product? 
uh, with all these additional like you know options and like uh, how so also think, how sellers are feeling about this yeah, yeah so I Oh, oh, we are. Uh, you are. You are freezing. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Uh, okay, now you're back. Hopefully. Now I'm can back. You... Okay. Yeah, you're back. Now you okay, can good. answer the question. So yeah, so I think a lot of sellers are feeling overwhelmed because it's like there's so there's so many different things, but it's really not that many things. It's you know, so there's the brand story. It might take you a day to create that section. You've got your A plus content. And again, remember that the brand story section, it doesn't have to be unique. So you can apply it to every single ASIN or you can apply it to just a few ASINs in your store um, and see kind of if it makes a difference with sales. You know, if people are more likely to buy from you because they now know a bit more about your brand, know a bit more about who you are, know a bit more about what you do. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think if you have a VA, you can definitely give them a list of ideas to create posts, they can use Canva. Um, you know, I've also been creating posts for sellers lately as well. Um, but yeah, so it's good to have like a bunch of posts like in stock so that you can just post them on Amazon when you feel like it. Um, but people shouldn't feel overwhelmed. They should just feel like they should try this out, you know, because you never know. Like at the beginning when Amazon introduced A plus content, I think a lot of brands were like, oh, I'm not gonna bother adding this because no one's gonna even scroll down that far. But then what happens is customers get more used to seeing these things and then they know to look out for it on Amazon. So I think once customers get more used to seeing posts on Amazon and more used to seeing the brand story section, then they're gonna be more, um, in, they're gonna engage more with that type of content. Um, so, you know, it's still early days, but like it's good to kind of get on that train because it's not going to cost you money. It's not like it's advertising that you're spending. Um, it's not PPC. You know, it's just posts that you can create very easily yourself. Just basically additional free exposure. Pretty much, yeah. Especially because you can show up on, on competitor pages with your posts, which then takes more people to your listings and to your product pages. Mm. Ed wants to know, can we choose a slightly provocative imagery to gain a bit more attention? So I think Amazon does have some, um, you know, limitations and rules when it comes to imagery. Like, obviously, you don't want to be posting like soft porn and stuff, you know, you want, you want to keep things like, um, you know, family friendly, I would say. But yeah, provocative imagery, yeah, it could work. You know, you could get really really creative with the branding, um, really bright colors. Maybe you're, you're selling fitness stuff, so you want to show some really hot models, like for sure. All right, uh, one more question from Ed. Uh, any advice for supplement companies since Amazon tends to restrict a lot of what we can say? I know, tell me, tell me about this. I've just been working with a supplement brand and I, <laughs> we've been having some issues. And I didn't even, say, I, I, had, I did all their listings and Amazon's making problems and I didn't even say anything like, anyway. Um, but advice for supplement companies, yeah, definitely. So with supplement companies, I feel like you can also use like health tips for posts. Like that would be a really good place to generate ideas for content, you know, just about, drinking enough water eating are you eating your fruits and vegetables did you get sunshine this morning like just random um bits of health advice that fit in with your brand values and and the kind of lifestyle that you want your customers to be living so that's a good way to post something that's really not going to cause problems with amazon um, but in terms of posting about your products themselves so you know you could say something like ancient Chinese medicine has been using this plant supplement for thousands of years and now we're also using it in our products like there's ways to kind of tell stories through ingredients that are in your products um yeah actually uh, could you give us a little bit an overview of s creating this brand story possibilities on uh, Amazon US and Amazon uh, European marketplaces is uh, so, all the function functionality the same do you have experience in that um that's a great question. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure if the functionality is the same. I do know it's on the US marketplace right now um, for brand registered sellers, but I'm not 100% sure if the European market has access to it yet. They might have access just to the, the small brand story section, which is the three questions like how we got started and why we love what we do and everything else. 
Um, but yeah, so if someone has, like I've mostly been working with US sellers on this stuff recently. So if anyone in Europe um, has information on that, I'd love mm. to know, yeah. And Ed is uh, appreciating your oh, idea of telling stories through ingredients. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, it's hard to think like <laughs> off the top of my head, you know, um, of things, cool. especially when I don't know the, the company or the products in question. So. All right. So uh, one more time, could you remind us how you can help Amazon sellers? And uh, again, you will find a link to a website of Sasha where you can read more what she's offering uh, yeah. and submit the form there. But yeah, please tell us how you help. So yeah, definitely. So if any brands are really looking to stand out from their competitors, because I know that's really tough. Um, I can help people with really solid brand messaging guides really describing their personality, their brand values, mission statements, you know, brand voice guides. I can help with that as well. Brand story, coming up with what makes your brand unique and how you can really connect with your customers. And obviously we do Amazon listings. We can create Amazon posts. We can do Shopify um, product descriptions because a lot of Shopify sellers are creating more kind of landing pages as opposed to just like a boring piece of text next to some product images now um, as well. So packaging text, anything that's related to your brand, to selling online, we would love to help you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Sasha. Thank you. Good luck yeah. in your business. Thank you so and, much. And uh, uh, Ed is saying uh, orange click discount. Orange click discount. Uh, Ed, can have a dis Ed, Ed can have a discount because he was so, um, he was like, such a good participant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, please contact Sasha through her website. And now I would like to uh, invite you to watch other video with Sasha, which uh, we recorded earlier, and she gives some good tips about uh, Amazon products A-plus content section.